Stray was a game I went into with no expectations at all and walked away happy with a filling, worthwhile experience. I personally don't indulge in indies often, but with this being included with PS Plus Extra, I figured I would give it a chance and I was happy I did. So today we are reviewing Stray. These reviews are broken down into three different categories, the good, the bad, and the score in that order. So let's start with the good and starting with the soundtrack, the game opens with a great intro theme playing, which actually follows up with each chapter, adding more great music as you explore the game. So for an indie game where you are on a tighter budget and graphics aren't going to be that of a AAA project, having great music is going to better capture the moment and captivate the player. The soundtrack is great. I don't have any qualms with the soundtrack. It's pretty well done, and honestly, I couldn't see how they could improve that, which brings us to presentation, as that is going hand-in-hand hand with soundtrack, right? One complements the other, and the art style is another thing that has to be crafted in such a way that doesn't scream, we're on a tight budget, and they actually nail it really well in Stray. It doesn't feel dated. It feels right at home on the PS5, and along with that, the color palette comes in, and it's diverse as we start in greener environments and head into darker ones as well. All this to say, you will see a variety of environments that help you feel the world is much bigger than it actually is. I did not become tired with the graphics or world as it really did feel like a well-refined experience that hit all the notes it needed to for its presentation. So really another major point for Stray when it comes to the overall good side of it. So most importantly, when we talk about factors for any video game is nailing the gameplay. That is the most important thing. And Stray being the first game I've ever played that lets you play as a cat, makes you feel agile with its movements. It's smooth and does not feel clunky or stiff, which was one of my concerns before playing. Running feels as it should, as you truly feel swift. The animations that accompany your actions are fitting and most importantly, fun. You're given a button for meowing, investigating, jumping, running, looking, and buttons to interact with your companion. But what really is well done is not so much related to the overarching mechanics of the game, but rather how the game smoothly and with great pace introduces new mechanics without lingering too long. It evolves as you continue your journey and doesn't spend too much time on any one mechanic. This is what is truly most impressive about the gameplay. There are also moments of stealth and combat although not in the traditional sense for a cat. What further amplifies the versatility of the game's mechanisms is the ability to choose how you approach certain scenarios. You may prefer to fight or you can even run depending on the given situation. There are also many puzzles and different NPCs you must interact with to further your progress towards the conclusion of the game. Ultimately, the gameplay changes often enough that it doesn't become stale. I actually felt my time with one of the mechanics was short-lived because it was so well done. And naturally, what comes with all these different aspects of a game is the story. And the story is probably what surprised me the most. Originally going into this game, I expected a very light-hearted adventure that certainly wouldn't visit any serious themes. I was wrong. To avoid spoilers, I will be vague and only address what I believe is a key to understanding how I feel about the game. And the way the game opens has you believe this is just a fun adventure, which actually quickly changes to become one about feeling lost and trying to adapt to the unknown. With many interesting colorful characters and personalities, we learn more about what has happened in the world of Stray, a world that has humor but also darker events and themes that make this an even deeper story than expected. So without spoiling anything, that's how I would describe my experience with Stray's story. Next up, we are talking about performance and content because these are all very important as well when you're purchasing a video game and when you want to experience a video game, you want it to have great performance and you want the content to be there. And in a world where games constantly release incomplete and with many bugs, Stray is refreshingly well put together. The game feels to be running at 4K 60 FPS with the odd frame dips, but infrequent enough that it didn't really impact my overall enjoyment of the game. I had zero game crashes and everything ran smoothly from start to finish. As for content, the game has many reasons to explore with collectibles and memories to collect to better explain the world of Stray. So we've talked about the good, naturally we have to talk about the bad. And there are some things, you know, naturally most games are going to have aspects that are seen as a negative, 
And while I had a lot of positive things to say, I also do have some issues with the game as well. The biggest one of them all being the fact that there is no way to view a map or even a waypoint. I do understand it was an intention to minimize the UI, but I really do feel there would have been a benefit to even viewing a map with the touchpad. Another unfortunate problem was infrequent checkpoints. There were times I would die and start a few sections back, which more than anything caused a lot of frustrations. This also made me feel like the game didn't respect my time. There was another instance where I turned off my game to come back later in the day to see I was sent back to objectives. In 2022, this is just unacceptable and I feel like you can't give any game a pass. Indie, not indie, AAA, whatever it is, these things are unacceptable and you can't have this happen. While the game is short and took me roughly three and a half hours to complete, it felt like a little bit too much of a fetch quest. For example, on multiple occasions to accomplish one objective, you may have to go do two other objectives for two other NPCs just to complete your main objective. Normally, this wouldn't be anything more than a fetch quest inconvenience, but the bigger problem comes in when you have little to no guidance on where exactly to go. Again, making me feel like the game isn't respecting my time. I do understand exploration as a part of the video game, but more guidance would have made it more enjoyable, especially if you're going to toss fetch quests my way. And that really does it for the bad side of things. So lastly, we're gonna talk about the score. And you have heard me praise this game and also criticize it. Overall, this game was a positive experience and I would recommend it for the price or the subscription fee to PlayStation Plus Extra. I personally would give this game a 7.6 out of 10. With the problems that I have with this game, it just doesn't warrant anything more to me than a 7.6. It was a strong seven for sure, but those things held it back, at least in my eyes. And that may be different for everyone else, but this is my review and that's my two cents on Stray the video game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to do more reviews like this going forward. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Stray. If you have played it, if you haven't played it, do you plan on picking it up after hearing what I had to say? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you have not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the video, it helps the channel a ton. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Links will be in the description. And I will talk to you guys all on the next one. Take care.